Best of our slash entitled parents episode 58. So the story starts like this. It's just another day and I go with my dad pick up an item I bought for my sister as a birthday present. When we get there we get the item and while we're walking out the store it just so happens to be that there is a Karen in the way. EP. Hey. My child wanted that. Item. Dad. Oh. I'm sorry is this the last copy? EP. Yeah. And my child wanted IT. Dad. Oh we already ordered and paid for it. I'm sorry. EP. Then go buy another one. You look like you're rich enough to do IT. We're not rich and we're barely in the middle class. Dad. Okay. This is for my daughter and today's her birthday. It would take another week for another copy to probably arrive. I'm sorry. Please let us go. At this point we leave. Thank you. Next. This takes place in the summer of 1998 and because of the years past, I had to ask other people to fill in parts of the story so dialogues are not exact and I guess swears were removed. If the mother is not considered entitled even after what she did, then I deserve removal and deletion and I apologize in advance. The setting. A small village near the sea that has an open cinema. Showing already released movies free of charge once a month only on summer. Everything paid by the community in advance for the seats, electricity bills etc. This time, lucky us, the owner and the mayor managed to get into an agreement to show Titanic. Fun fact, only few people had a television and even fewer of ECR. So imagine how happy everyone was. We even asked the municipal center staff if they could print posters for us to take home. And so they did. It would give them after the movie day, sparkle sparkle, because it would take time and resources. Movie day comes. Everyone is so excited. For most, it was the first colored movie they would watch on cinema. EK is 6 years old and is not permitted entrance by the owner O. Oh. Nevertheless, he manages to get in and go to the projector and starts messing around hitting it etc. O oh took the kid outside. EM comes, knife in one hand, potato on the other. EK starts crying. EM, what did you do to my baby? Oh, I'm sorry EM, but I can't let EK watch the movie or play with the projector. He's too young and might see something bad or break something. The projector is expensive and he almost broke it. EK, but I want to play. EM, what, did, you, say? Oh, I'm sorry but, EM, shut your mouth. You'll let him in because I said so. I pay for the cinema so my kid should play with that thing all he wants. EM goes home. Leaves knife and potato. Seems to me weird to this day, but I guess it wasn't back then to roam the street with a knife, and comes back holding a payphone card. She takes a look inside to see the audience and sees her nephew and niece inside as well as some other kids. EM. So, they are old enough but my kid is not? EK. He is a bad man. Oh. The movie is 13 year old and up. Not sure, I thought it was 15 plus but doesn't matter much. I can't let EK in. EK kicks O. There is a lot of kicking. EM pushes O and gets in the theater even though she is allowed in anyway. Went to the 5 kids that were inside already. Aged 11 to 13 and took them out by force. Either pulling on their ears or their shirts. Including her relatives. EM. If my boy can't watch it, these kids shouldn't either. I won't let them. Oh. But these kids are almost old enough. EK keeps crying other kids go and fetch their parents. The movie has already started at this point but nobody seems to mind of the ruckus. They are too excited. This makes EK cry even more and start yelling wanting to watch the movie. EM and other parents PR at the door now. EM. O doesn't let my kid in because he is showing porn. P. What? EM. Yup. He says my kid is not allowed but your kids are nearly old enough. But I took them out because they shouldn't watch porn at their age. P. So we are paying for porn? Parents leave smacking their children etc. One of them told me he was grounded for all the summer and had to stay home with a teacher, doing summer lessons. Math and grammar while the beach is right outside your window, heat on the rise, no air conditioning. Still bitter about that. EM goes to the payphone and calls the police who arrive in the next 5 minutes. EM. O shows porn to kids and I want him arrested. Oh, I would never. EM. I want to sue him, and I have P as my witnesses. We already took the kids outside. Oh, it's not porn, it's a movie about a shipwreck. People die inside. 
I just can't allow anyone below 13 watching it. Paul, so you confirm you should only let people 13 years and up until you had some kids below that. When the movie ends please come to the station. EM, we won't arrest this man. It's not porn. We have already seen the Titanic. Your kid is too young. Just go home. EM, no, you destroyed my kid's day. He wanted to see this movie and you are cruel people. We will stay here all night. Paul. EM. Go home. EM. Then give me the Georgia Rock. Projector. She was not and still isn't good with technology and foreign languages. For my kid to play. We deserve as much. EK started kicking the officers so EM left and after a few days she went and tore up every poster the municipal center had printed because she was owed as much. The cinema owner got a fine he couldn't pay. For every child under the age of 13 he let inside and the cinema worked three more times after that. Three times until now. Every time I pass outside I see an overgrown by plants. Reminder of my childhood. I was EK. Thank you. Next. Long time lurker. Just remembered this story. Posting off phone so please excuse any typos slash grammar. I worked a summer job as a teenager at this small scale theme park in the gift shop. We sold fudge. Very overpriced and mediocre at best, but it was crazy how much money it brought in. We had slabs on a counter and used a virii dull knife and spatula to cut and scoop fudge. The fudge was on a counter behind a glass display, but an issue was that the glass didn't go all the way to the counter, which left a small slit where children love to poke their fingers through and poke the fudge. Oftentimes they'd poke, lick their fingers, and continue digging. I understood with smaller kids not having a lot of control with a colorful piece of candy in front of them. I would politely ask them to stop and alert their parents, who 99.9% of the time would apologize and pull their kid away. I would just make a mental note to throw the entire edge of the fudge away later. But one day, I met to Karen. She has a son that's around 10 slash 11 years old. He keeps asking me for free samples and I tell him I can't give him one without a parent present. We always ask parents in case the children have allergies. He's pretty upset. Goes over and asks his mom who just ignores him. He comes back and stands in front of the fudge. I figure he'll just wait until the mother comes over. So I go about doing other things behind the counter. It didn't take 5 seconds for me to look back over and see him digging his fingers under the glass to scrape off some fudge. I tell him sternly to stop, and look over at the mother, who's with a friend, and she gives me a what of it sort of glare. Whatever, I figure he's having leftover toddler spit anyways. He stopped long enough for me to turn away again, and he's right back at it. Really aggressively I should say since he's tenish and has the dexterity to really try and get to it. I tell him to again to stop more loudly this time. The kid freezes, and begins to cry. The mother immediately barrels over and asks me why I'm yelling at her son. I tell her him touching the fudge makes it unsuitable to sell. The families are looking at us with mixed reactions. Some outrage at me and others giving the mother a judgmental look. The entitlement of parents during family vacations wasn't a new concept to me. This lady then points out that I'd yelled at her son with a knife in my hand. And that I was threatening him with a knife. I don't even know what to say to that I'm so surprised. And I was mentally kicking myself because I usually always have the knife pointed down. But in that moment I had it pointing up as I was cutting fudge squares earlier. But keep in mind I'm behind an entire counter from her son. She then starts trying to get other people involved saying I have no right to yell at her son and threaten to hurt him. Her friend backs her up and calls me a terrible human being. Other parents start chiming in. It's a full on onslaught on my 16 year old self. She insists on talking to a manager and, not being able to handle it, I quickly call one on the radio. They get there and she rushes over to tell my manager how I was threatening to stab, and kill, ladies and gentlemen, her 10 year old son. I'm nearly to tears. And there's also a line of people trying to check out. One lady whispered to me how she needs to parent her child better, which in the moment was reassuring. She's going off on my manager, not letting me get a single word in. I saw that arguing with her was getting nowhere, so I spoke over her loud enough to apologize, and say something along the lines of, look, I can't do anything else here but apologize. This kind of caught her off guard, and she instantly started to let up on her abuse. 
I walked back to the counter to help others customers while she continued to talk to my manager. The situation mellowed out and my boss eventually let me go to the break room to cry. My manager commended me for appeasing such a raging bee and I got a positive remark on my file for professionalism. It may seem unfair but this is the degree of customer service at tourist places. They're always right. Anyways years after the fact my younger sister got a summer job at the same place in the same gift shop as me. And she was telling me how they're not allowed to address customers with a knife in their hand because of an incident where someone accused a staff member of threatening them. And I was like, oh hey that's totally because of me. No sweet justice or anything. But that job definitely burned me out of customer service. I now work in a lab where I listen to podcasts and talk to no one all day and love every minute of it. Thank you. Next. Some apostrophes might be missing because that key is broken. Also not that him like 12. EM entitled mommy K entitled kid me me see cop. Backstory. This particular EM has bothered my family a lot before but this time went a little too far because my dog has like a dog form of PTSD because her owner before was abusive. Now the story. Me. At park minding my own business with my dog. My dog's name is Roscoe. A Labrador Golden Mix. EK. Walks up your dog is so cute can I pet him? Me. Yeah but be very gentle. EK. Pets him then walks away. EK. Comes back and I thought they were going to pet him but instead they start kicking my dog. Me. Hey what the hell are you doing? I say this as I push him away. Gently let me emphasize gently. EK. Starts crying I was just playing MAAA this lady hit me he says this as he runs to his mom. Now this is where EM comes in and let Emmy tell you she had the Starbucks in her hand and like that hair color slash style that just screams Karen and she had that walk that she was about to kill me. EM. Why did you assault my child? Me. Okay first of all, I gently pushed him out of the way and second of all, he was kicking my dog. EM. Yeah but he told me that your thing. Yes she called my dog a thing. Bit him. Me. Okay then. Can I see the bite mark because Roscoe never did that. At this point she was obviously mad because her face started to get red. Also note that she was starting to attract attention so I had many witnesses. EM. I'm not going to show you because you assaulted him give me his leash she gestures her hand out. Me. What? I'm not going to do that. EM. Yes you are she then tries to take the leash out of my hand. Roscoe started barking because he was scared for me and himself. EM. I'm going to tell the police that your dog bit him. Me. Okay then he'll be waiting here. She then calls the police and they show up at the park. See. What happened? EM. That girl over there stole my dog. Me. What? No I didn't. EK. Mommy. Mommy I want my doggy. EM. I know sweetie just wait. The cop then comes to me. See. Did you steal their dog? Me. No and I have many, many pictures to prove that he is mine. I then show him the pictures from when I adopted him, his third, fourth, and fifth birthday, and when he had to get a cone for a while because he was like, biting at his fur and I also explained how she tried grabbing the leash and showed him that her stupid acrylics gave me scratches on my hand. He then asked the people around us what happened and they all backed me up. See, alright, EM I'm going to have to bring you to the station for harassing a minor. EM, what? That little girl tried to steal my dog I want her arrested. C. Alright ma'am just calm down. EM. No no I will not this is not fair. At this point she was already in the police car with her crotch goblin and I was left alone but went home shortly after so I could give my dog some treats and help him relax after that. TL. Dr. EM tries taking my dog. Then calls the police and ends up getting taken in. Thank you. Next. Context. My mom. Grandma, and I stayed in an apartment-like place for the week as a mini vacation. There are two floors. The kitchen and living room on the top floor and two bedrooms on the bottom. I stayed on the couch on the top floor while mom and GMA stayed in the two rooms. Last night, mom decided to stay up and post crap on Facabook till like midnight to 1.30am. With all the lights on. Story. Me. Me mom. Karen. It is 1am and mom is just typing away, posting crap on Facabook and giggling every now and then or something. Me. Mom. It's like 1am. Are you going to bed? Mom. As soon as I'm done posting this for my women's ministry thing. 
Me. You said that an hour ago. Mom. Just close your eyes. I sigh and roll over so my back is facing her. I should probably tell you that I have three phases of exhaustion if I'm awake this long. Phase 1. Yawning and eye rubbing of the eyes. I've already passed phase 1. Phase 2. Grumpy remarks and kinda rude. I just passed this phase. Phase 3. Giggly and in a joke telling mood. Signs cannot explain the sudden change I had. And for some reason, I am in the mood for Chuck Norris jokes. Me. Giggling and sit up hey mom. Mom. Yes. Op. Me. Did you know Chuck Norris can smell colors? Mom. Looks at me as if to ask if I'm okay which I'm not. What? Me. Bursts out laughing yet. Yeah. Chuck Norris can pick an apple from an orange tree and make the best lemonade you've ever tasted. I'm, as Markiplier would call it, a giggly bitch at this point. Mom. Are you done? Me. Most people wear Superman pajamas, but Superman wears Chuck Norris pajamas. Mom. Kinda laughs and looks back to her computer and goes back to typing oh boy. Me. Laughing mom. Chuck Norris can hear sign language. If you're wondering where I got all these Chuck Norris jokes, I got them from a teacher who would have a daily Chuck Norris joke on the board every day. So, I unleashed them all on my facabook addicted mom. The time is now 1.25am and mom still isn't in bed. Me. Chuck Norris can kill two stones with one bird. Mom. Op. That's enough. Me. Giggling like a schoolgirl whose crush said hi to her mom. When Chuck Norris falls in water, he doesn't get wet. The water gets Chuck Norris. Me. There is no theory of evolution. Just a list of creatures Chuck Norris allows to live. Mom. Op. Go to sleep. I need to post this. Me. Chuck Norris threw a grenade and killed 50 people. Explodes with sleep deprived laughter then the grenade blew up. Mom. OP. I need to focus on this. I can't stop laughing at this point and mom is struggling to focus on Facabook. Me. Death had a near Chuck Norris experience. Me. Mom. Once a cobra bit Chuck Norris leg. After 5 days of excruciating pain. The cobra died. Mom. OP. Go to sleep. Me. Chuck Norris narrated Morgan Freeman's life. Mom. Laughs a little up. Are you okay? Me. Through laughter no. I have issues. Mom. Chuck Norris can kill your imaginary friends. Mom. Me. Chuck Norris tells Simon what to do. Laughs. It is now 1.30 am when mom closes her laptop. Mom. Are you proud of yourself? I couldn't post my women's ministry stuff because of you and Chuck Norris jokes. I literally can't take anyone or anything seriously because I'm too far gone into insanity and laughter. Me. Hey mom. Chuck Norris counted to infinity. Twice. Mom. Op. You need sleep. If I was remotely sane, I would have probably thought to myself, you're just now realizing that? But alas, I'm too giggly and insane. Me. Chuck Norris beat the sun at a staring contest. Mom. Getting a drink op. Go to sleep. Me. Chuck Norris is the only person who can punch a cyclops between the eye. Mom starts going downstairs to bed. Me. Calls to her the fear of Chuck Norris is called logic. I can hear my mom sigh in exasperation. After a little bit, I'm still a giggly bitch and I creep downstairs and the light in mom's room is still on. I try to not giggle as I'm thinking of the Chuck Norris joke in my head that I'll be telling my mom. I'm finally able to regain some of my composure as I open mom's door. Mom. What now? Me. Bursts out laughing to the point my gut hurts. Mom. First you interrupt me posting important stuff on Facabook and now this? Op, what is wrong with you? Me. Chuck Norris can build a snowman out of rain in the desert. Mom. Oh my gosh. Op. Go. To. Bed. Me. Just one more. Mom. Fine. Me. Bill Gates lives in constant featuring the Chuck Norris PC will crash. Bursts into yet another stream of laughter. Mom. Rolls eyes and shoes me away. It wasn't until a good 30 minutes of laughter and giggles that I eventually fall asleep. I know this story isn. T as good as others on this subreddit, but oh well. I tried the Chuck Norris joke thing again tonight and mom was heading downstairs before I could get Chuck Norris out of my mouth and I think I accidentally found repellent for my mom. Thank you. Next. I'm on my phone at the moment so this might look like crap but here goes.
So I've posted before about stories of the crazy people I deal with at the animal shelter I work at. This shelter is part of my county's animal control so we also deal in violations and fines for owned animals that get loose and cause trouble in neighborhoods. We get these two dogs in the other week and it's not the first time we have had these dogs in our shelter for running about. It's the third time. We contact the owners and tell them their dogs are at our shelter and hear nothing back from them until a few days ago. Now about these dogs. We get calls about them almost daily. They get out and chase kids in the neighborhood and go after other dogs, rip through trash cans, the works. Every time we get out there the owners have them back up so all we can do is give them a warning. This time, however, the dogs got out went after a kid, changed course and ran into a neighbor's yard where the neighbor's cat was relaxing on the porch until the dogs rushed it and ripped it to pieces, killing the cat. Now the shits hit the fan. The neighbor locks the dogs in her garage and we come out and get them. Fast forward to the other day. The owners finally come in and it's a young couple with a newborn. Right off the bat they come in aggressive. Demanding their dogs back. Claiming we stole them. We tell them that their dogs were out running loose again and that they charged a kid and killed a cat. All of which resulting in pretty hefty fines and violations and that's just what the county has for them because their neighbor was talking about a lawsuit. All this sets them off even more. They start screaming about how they weren't paying anything and demanding we give them their dogs back or else. They get increasingly aggressive very quickly but despite all this we tell them they're paying their fines or they can leave without their dogs. County shelter isn't a retail chain. Screaming and stamping your feet and making threats isn't going to get you your way here. The entitled mother makes some more thinly veiled threats about how we've somehow fucked up and are gonna get what's coming to us. The husband knocks a cup of pens off our counter and they storm out. While they were walking to their car they walked past some volunteers of ours who overheard them loudly talking about going home and getting ready to come back and blow up the shelter and kill all of us. Of course cops were called and reports made. What the entitled parents aren't smart enough to realize is we have all their information. Their names, address, phone numbers, copies of driver's licenses, we work for the county. We are a small sector of the government and these idiots just made a bomb threat against us. Sorry for not posting the dialogue that transpired but as I said I'm on my phone just getting a quick moment to post this. If I hear any updates on the police investigation, I'll follow up with a part 2. Have a good one people and try not to get blown up out there. Thank you. Next. I've awaited to post this story ever since I heard of the sub over a year ago, so here goes nothing. Disclaimers first. 